Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. Verse 10, because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from God, from my God. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What I find interesting, brothers and sisters, about this portion of Scripture is that it's talking about the faithful church. And notice that the last two churches that are addressed in the book of Revelation out of the seven churches are the faithful church and the lukewarm church. I believe that the rapture-ready remnant believers are part of that faithful church. Now, why do I believe that? Well, there are a couple, uh, excuse me, there's a couple clues in the scripture. So it says in verse 8, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, you have kept my word, and have not denied my name. You know, many of us, brothers and sisters, we see this open door as the rapture, the door that was opened in Revelation 4 that says, come up here, right? And we're going to hear the trumpet and we're going to go through that door, the door of opportunity. And many of us have little strength left, right? We are groaning. We are fighting the enemy. We're fighting doubts. We're struggling with being double-minded. We're struggling with family members thinking we're crazy. And then we struggle with the people within the church circles that just are not seeing things clearly. And so we have a little strength, but it says we have kept his word. So we stay true to the word of God. We hold the word of God true and, and close to our heart. And it says that we have not denied his name. We haven't denied Christ. In fact, we proclaim Christ. We're preaching the gospel. We're redeeming the redeeming the time because the days are evil. We're, we're literally trying to get people in the door with us before it shuts. And then it goes on in verse 10 to say that because he, because we have kept his command to persevere, he will keep us from the hour of trial. What is the hour of trial? It's the seven year tribulation period. And how do we know that? It says it'll come upon the whole world to test or try those who dwell on the earth, okay? This is a time of testing called Jacob's trouble. It's a time to test those who have been left behind to see if they're gonna choose Christ or be absorbed by the Antichrist system. And then notice what it says in verse 11. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. In the book of Timothy, it says, I think it's I think it's uh, 2 Timothy, that there's a crown of righteousness to those who have loved his appearing. Now, we are those of the rapture-ready remnant that love his appearing. It is our blessed hope. We are every day waking up praying, come Lord Jesus. And it says in here that we have a warning that no one would take our crown. We have to hold fast what we have. What do we have? We have this hope. We have this hope that's all we have is our hope. And it's saying, don't let anybody steal your hope in the rapture. If you overcome, I will make you a pillar, in verse 12, a pillar in the temple of my God and shall go out no more. And then, not only that, the, he will write the name of his God in the city of his God, the new Jerusalem, and basically will be given a new name. So there's so many promises for the faithful church that holds fast what they have 
looks for that open door, which is the rapture, keeps God's words uh, close to their heart, and it says very clearly that we have a little strength. Now, here's a comparison. The last church that is addressed is the lukewarm church. And to the angel of the church of Laodicea write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So in contrast to the faithful church that already has an open door, right? A door that no man can shut, being the rapture. And these are the believers that have pretty much already set their hope on going through the open door. Here we have Christ talking to the lukewarm church. And he says, I stand at the door and knock. So here he's saying, you haven't accepted the rapture. You are completely oblivious. See what it says? It says, they are miserable, poor, blind, and naked. These are the people within the Christian circles, brothers and sisters, that I believe, this is what I believe, that they are true Christians. Because if they weren't, he wouldn't say in verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. It goes back to Hebrews, Hebrews 12. Those whom I love or those who are adopted as sons is the, is the ones he rebukes and chastises. So I, it's talking to Christians because it's talking to the lukewarm church. These are the Christians that belong within our Christian circles that scoff at the rapture or are so worldly minded. They, have, they don't have their mind set on prophecy. They have no clue what time it is. They have no clue what season it is. And Christ is in this pleading with them. Re, you know, repent and be zealous, right? Be zealous. You are lukewarm. You don't, you're not out there per, uh, preaching the gospel. You're not telling people Jesus is coming. You're not talking about the rapture. You're cold. You're neither cold nor hot. You're lukewarm. So he says, be zealous and repent because I stand at the door and knock. And then he promises the people that actually respond, the people that actually wake up and realize what time it is, that he will come into them and dine with them. So, he is promising more of an intimate fellowship. And I know that there's going to be a lot of Christians when the rapture happens that they're going to be found ashamed at the Lord's coming. That's why it says um, in verse 18 that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. He wants you to not be ashamed of his coming. He wants you to be ready for the rapture. So here in the last of the two churches, of the seven churches, we have the faithful church, which I call the rapture-ready remnant, and the last church, which is a lukewarm church, which I think really encompasses everything that we see within America and around the world that are completely oblivious. They're true believers, and yet they don't know really what time it is and what season it is. So let's do our best to really uh, pray for those people within the church that know Christ but are sincerely just worldly and have their mind set on earthly things and not on heavenly things. And let's pray for the lost. You know, the lost could just easily be those types of people that enter the faithful church and are so on fire for God and realize that it is the rapture could happen any day. And we are seeing that, right, brothers and sisters? We're seeing people that are getting dreams and visions that were asleep within the church and now they're awakened and now they're part of the faithful church and they have left the lukewarm church. So again, I pray this is a, uh, an encouragement to you guys and I pray that those of us out there that um, are in the battle, in the thick of things, remember what Jesus says, you have a little strength, you have kept my word and have not denied my name. And so we know the promises that are given to us. Maranatha.